What's up? Alex One here, and uh, today we'll look at round six. I think it's round six. Yeah, round six against uh, Vyacheslav Slava Ikonikov, who's a GM. He has a rating of uh, 2519, if I recall correctly. And um, yeah, I, I have played a bunch of GMs in normal games, but. Um, I've I've had a bunch of draws, but no wins. And um, but yeah, this guy plays uh plays some uh, funky stuff. So he always plays the Sicilian and uh, knight f3, and now he usually plays knight c6. And he plays this line here, and I I have uh, I'd, I'd 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 looked at this d6 here, and I'd looked at uh. Either knight one and one c three or c four. I looked at both lines, and uh, I'd figured something out here to play against him. And he, I, I think he was, uh, he, he was, well, he wasn't afraid, but I think he he thought I'd prepared, I'd I'd prepare against him. So he just went for something else here, but he went for this line, and this is known as the O'Kelly. And the main reason of a6 here uh, is, is that if d4 takes, takes uh, knight f6, knight c3, e5 is a possibility here. Now knight db5 isn't good, so people usually go knight b3, but then bishop b4. And this is kind of good for black. So this is kind of the main point of the opening. I'd uh, I'd seen that he played this like three times or something, and uh, I'd looked at this as well. Uh, I was also prepared for a g6, which is something he played a bunch of times in 2015, in the early 2015, late 2014, I think. And I'd also prepare against uh, prepared against that. Uh, so yeah. It was kind of a long preparation, but yeah, managed to work out quite good. So I I figured I'd go knight c3 here, and the only real follow-up here is b5 here. I hadn't actually had an opponent who played this knight c3, so I, well, I wasn't 100% sure that he'd go for d b5. But other move here is d6, but then if d4. You get into some sort of nims, uh, nimzo, some sort of uh, Nidorf. and I was sure that he wouldn't play this because he, uh, I, I don't think he's ever played the Nidorf. So I was kind of prepared for this b5, which is kind of known as the main move here, but it's not that good. So d4, bishop b7. This isn't actually the best move here. E6 is the best. And I'd only looked at e6, but it doesn't really matter because now bishop e7 is the move. Um, so I figured, why not bishop d3? Seems normal enough. But here you went uh, e6. I think actually, by the way, I think e6, bishop d3, queen c7 is the best move order. But I'm not 100% sure here, actually. So if you uh, if you want to know for sure, you have to look for yourself in the database, databases or with an engine or whatever. But um, yeah, that's kind of beside the point. Because here you went 96, and this is kind of interesting. Uh, I wasn't too sure what to do, here, but I think taking is kind of fine. He doesn't want to take with the d pawn. Because then we can maybe get e5 in and a knight to e4, and that's kind of horrible for him. Or a bishop to e4, even. Uh, so he took with the bishop. He also closes his bishop diagonal, which is also not good. And now queen e2. Seems normal enough. Also, uh, if, for instance, b4, we can even go knight d5. It's kind of one of the points as well. Uh, so yeah, queen e2, knight f6, and now e5, and here he had to go b4. I wasn't sure what, yet what I was going to do. Uh, I think I was going to play knight e4 actually, but e takes f is maybe better. Takes, 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 and now maybe b3. 
putting this bishop on this diagonal. But yeah, it's not that special, I guess. The G file opening up is kind of scary for me as well. So B4 was a better move. Knight E4 maybe. I don't know. This feels like a bit better for us. But he doesn't have to take on E4 obviously. He can just go Queen C7 maybe. Maybe F4. I don't know. Uh, instead he played Knight D5 and now I've made a mistake of going Knight E4. I'd missed this idea actually. A4. I'd seen it but I kind of forgot about it afterwards. I'd seen this uh, before in my head. It's kind of in this Freshnikov view also, also have this idea of just attacking this pawn chain of a6 b5 but now uh, yeah I guess this was much better because if before we can just take on a6 and now we we're just a clear pawn up uh, and if if he takes we can just take with the rook and a5 and we just get such a good version of a, a, a Sveshnikov position bishop e5 and c4 and just bishop d2 rook d1 I mean rook d1 and c4 is also such a threat now as well so I should have definitely won for that I went for knight e4 um, visualizing some mating ideas if he goes like bishop e7 and castle short there are sometimes sometimes I can go queen h5 or something I don't know it was just a bit optimistic I guess but he went knight b4 and this is actually a quite a critical position queen c7 might be the best move not this c7 I was planning knight g5 here actually and threatening queen h5 and stuff like that queen f4 f3 I mean yeah I wasn't too sure about this bishop b7 is also a move but then uh, queen g4 and this was kind of the point because if g6 then we can just go bishop h6 and this must be annoying for him so he's a bit stuck here the, the bishop can't really move and also g6 is definitely not a good move because then bishop g5 obviously and if bishop e7 just check here just check here and this is just this is just plain bad for him um so yeah knight b4 which is it's a it's a solid move he's gonna win this uh, this bishop here at first i wanted to go knight g5 here but yeah it does, just doesn't really work because he can just take and then play bishop e7 or something uh, so I uh, I figured I should go bishop f4 and he took and now I should take with the c pawn which is actually it's really unnatural but it's it's quite a good move um, the point being is that this bishop is just stuck the same idea that we had three moves ago if he goes bishop e7 we're just gonna go queen c4 and that just totally yeah annoys him because he can never castle then due to bishop h6 and uh, that's kind of the point of c takes d3 that after bishop e7 queen g4 this knight on e4 is defended otherwise uh, knight uh, bishop takes e4 is always a possibility for him but now we just take back and or even take on g7 in between so that's kind of the point and also uh, we can open the c file now so there are a bunch of key points with this c takes d and I actually think this is a very good move so he has to go for bishop e7, he has to develop somehow um, there are no real other ways of continuing here maybe queen b6 but then then just queen, queen h5 or something, queen g4 maybe and he just he doesn't really have a good way of uh, continuing so queen g4 and king f8 and I figured after bishop b7 that he'd go for king f8 because there is no real other move if g6 then bishop h6 yet again and if castle bishop h6 as well and just winning a an exchange so king f8 and now yeah I managed to uh, somewhat destroy his, uh, his king's position but on the other hand he has the bishop pair and we have more space but yeah 
I wasn't too sure how to continue, so I figured rook f c8, c1. Uh, I don't want to move this rook because I want to have a4 in the future sometime. Uh, and also, do I want to put this rook on d1? Probably not. Only if he takes an e4, but then that's a whole other concession by itself. So that's also one of the points here that this pawn can never move to d5 because then he, this pawn is always weak. If he goes to d5, obviously we have e takes d on passant. So rook fc1, h5. Uh, yeah, this is kind of annoying someone and I didn't think he'd go g6 here actually. It's kind of logical in a sense but on the other hand um, these dark squares are super weak now and I tried to take advantage of them immediately by playing knight f6. So this is kind of annoying for him. He can take but then we take back. And if he takes now there's this bishop e5 and if he doesn't, this pawn is always, well, kind of annoying. It is double-edged, because on the other hand, this pawn is uh, is an easy target for him. But we can always defend it, and I, I think we're doing pretty good here, actually. He did play this, but he played uh, king g8 here. And now I went uh, queen e5. And this might not be the best move, actually. Uh, the engine thinks h3 is a good move, and if he takes, well, he, I don't really understand this. Well, I, I, I figured f4, and we'd be doing really good here. And I don't, I don't think my opinion has changed here. Um, so yeah, if that's the best idea here, then. This, this is just a, a pretty good position for me. Um, d6. And now queen d4. Yeah, I, I mean, black is just uh, in a in a world of uh, world of hurt. He doesn't really have a, a, an easy way of continuing. But yeah, queen e5. I, I try to uh, keep his pawn on d7 here and also just defend it. I mean, he couldn't really take, but I just wanted to defend. But... I I I figured he'd go h4 here, threaten either h3 or rook h5. Both are kind of annoying, but I uh, I had thought of this and I wanted to go g to bishop g5 here. Um, and I wanted to put f4 in and then if d6 we can just go to e3 and there's no real threat or something. He went uh, bishop d5, and now rook c2, and this might not be the best move. I think queen e3 or d4 are better moves, but it's kind of easy to say after a game, after I know what's happened. So I went rook c2, and now I went d6, queen e3. And this e5, and this is really annoying actually. So my rook on c2, it's kind of a logical idea to double rooks and try and put a rook on c7, but I'm a bit too, too slow. If I got rook c1 here, I thought he'd take on a2 actually. Turns out that that's, well, it's fine I guess. So I figured I couldn't do that, and if I go b3, b3 first, uh, which I went, then queen d7 and now this queen is coming to f5 so I saw this queen coming to f5 here and I figured what should I do against that because that's kind of annoying um, so I had uh, this idea in mind and uh, I played bishop h6 here and it seems that objectively I, I, I had missed one move in my <laughs> calculations here so um, he went queen f5, bishop g7, and now I'd only looked at uh, rook g5 here. And then I figured f3 and would be doing fine because if he takes with the pawn, with the with the bishop, with this rook f1 here, and if he takes with the queen, we have just queen takes g5. So I figured we'd be doing pretty well here. We'd never be worse, and uh, 
Yeah, we're not getting mated, so that's kind of the the, the bonus. Uh, but I missed this queen g5 in my calculations, so I was a bit uh, annoyed by that. Okay, so I have to take. There's not not another another move here. F4 might be the only other move. So I took, and uh, yeah, I um, well, I, like I said, I didn't really think this. I didn't see the queen g5, so I was a bit annoyed here. But I had a. Quite a cool idea here, after uh, 10 minutes of thinking or something like that. 15, I don't know, I wasn't sure, I, I'm not sure how much I thought. But I played, uh, let's just stop the engine because it's kind of a cool move. So I played F3 here. Uh, this is kind of obvious because we don't want to lose that pawn. He took. And this might not be the best move. I'll uh, I'll open up the engine uh, after this. But uh, King H7 might be a better move. Just to go, uh, I don't know, to uh, to just to wait a bit, and see what I'll do. Also to uh, stop the threat of Bishop H6 in some lines. But after taking, I played G4 here, and this is kind of a really cool move. It's not even winning or something, but it's just so... <laughs> uh, I mean, it's kind of spectacular, this move, I think. Um, it's worth pointing out that my opponent here had 5 minutes or something. And um, I had like 40. And he was kind of uh, shocked here, I think. So the point is, if he takes, we have, to, we have this rook c1. And now, if bishop, we're threatening uh, rook c8, rook h8, mate. And, um, well, rook h5, I hadn't really thought about that, actually. But I figure we'll just go rook c8, take here, and just rook c8. And if g5, just take on a8. Yeah, this is just easily winning, because if rook takes h3, we have this check and we win that one as well. So, um, the threat is rook c8, and if we should be 7, then I figured rook c7. And, um, yeah, we're just winning a piece here, rook b8, rook takes b7. Um, but f3 is necessary, because if you go g4 here, then you can take, and if rook c1 now, he has to check. And now this sucks. So, um, that's why f3 was kind of necessary. He takes and then g4. It's a, it's quite strange, actually. Because if he doesn't do anything, if he goes something like, I don't know, bishop b7 here or something, uh, we have this one as well. This is also a threat. So, it's kind of a hard move to deal with, especially in time control, but after uh, looking at this with an engine, after the game, uh, e4 was the best move. And I was planning to go d4 then, and then king h7, rook c1, and now e3. And the point is that this pawn is, uh, <laughs> well, the point is this actually, rook c5. And, uh, yeah, this is kind of sick. This is a really sick move. So, best here is taking, then taking and then taking. And this is a draw. There is uh, there's not really any uh, any way to continue here. Although it seems like we'd be doing fine here, uh, there are some threats that uh, well this bishop f3 just holds everything and now there's not really a way to continue here for me. So he can just Pause, you can just go king h6, king g6, and this is just a draw. So, um, that was one of the good moves, but also what he played was... Well, it wasn't good, but I, I made a mistake there as well. So he went king h7 with uh, 40 seconds on the clock now, something like that. Rook c1 and rook g8, and here I, uh, here I made a mistake. So the best here is rook c7, 
which is in my eyes a really strange move um, the point is actually that if bishop d5 then we can go rook c8 and if not bishop d5 then we can just take on f7 so he has to take on g4 now and well this is this is really good for us however I went rook c8 but now he can take on g4 and this this kind of sucks actually if, if, you, if you look at the evaluation uh, black is doing fine here the point of taking on g4 is that he can he can take c8 take and play g5 and now although I'm a pawn I'm a piece up he has three pawns for the piece and these ones are pretty you know scary they're gonna run pretty fast so king g6 h3 and rook h4 and I mean such a position is definitely hard to evaluate as well but yeah I hadn't seen this during the game and neither did my opponent but yeah so he took on g7 which was his point and it was the only move I was looking at myself as well king takes and now king f3 he went e4 and now it's kind of interesting because how do I want to continue here um, d4 might be a move but I figured maybe f5 or rook d5 and then f5 I think I wasn't too sure um, but I figured uh, that rook, rook e8 might be a good move because if he goes d5 here then we can go d4 and now this rook is stuck here as well and I can just go king e3 king f4 um, so I want rook e8 rook e he can he can count retake here because this bishop is hanging so he went f5 which is kind of, it was kind of a shocker to me because it feels so scary to open up your king side if I have two rooks here your king is never really safe but it turns out the king somewhat is if I get a check in and then d4 d5 and rook e6 then it's a mate but I don't have that much time so I played king e3 hoping to go to f4 he took on g4 I took on e4 and here my opponent made the final mistake of the game so this GM uh, Ikonikov had to go king f7 here and I was kinda looking at this move actually and I was thinking maybe maybe I should go rook c8 maybe I should go rook h8 I wasn't too sure I think I think rook h8 might be the best move here I just want to take this pawn and be done but now rook e5 might, might be a good move taking here to be honest I think I had this position in my head actually at some point but like I said my opponent had uh, so little time and although he had 30 seconds per move and it it's still not that much time but he made the mistake of going rook e5 here now I can take take and play rook g1 and this is actually just winning because this bishop is uh, well it's kinda captured if he takes on h3 we're just gonna take the bishop and if he doesn't do anything we're gonna take on g4 and the bishop can't really go anywhere so yeah he tried for so uh, several moves and um, he took here and I had to be a bit precise here but I think the most precise move is rook g4 here as you can see by the in engine evaluation uh, king f3 might be a move as well but this is kind of clear because we don't we we want to take on h4 and then take on h3 and then it's it's super easy so the only move to uh, to calculate here for black is g5 okay taking the only move to calculate is here is here is king h6 because otherwise then just rook h5 and rook take h4 so king h6 and now there there are a bunch of ways to win here um i think the one i played is uh, really the most easily calculated rook g1 uh, rook g4 is the the engine way king h5 and now uh, king f5 h2 rook g8 and now this is uh, 
Yeah, it's also kind of easy, but I think Route 2 1, and now there's no real way for him to continue. He can put his king there, but I can just stop these two pawns with my rook and then just win these two pawns with my king. So I go king takes e5, h2, rook takes h1, king g4, rook takes h2, king g3, rook c2. And, well, now he resigned. I mean, yeah, it's kind of easy, easily to see, uh, easy to see that I, uh, I'm going to win this f h2. I was planning to go rook c1 actually. King g2 and then king c5. And the king is not even close enough to stop one pawn, let alone two. So yeah. Um, yeah. A pretty good game. Uh, I win against uh, this GM. And now I was at uh, 5 out of 6. So that's kind of a good score as well. Um, the next round I had to play another GM, Sip Garens, Dutch uh, I, uh, GM, and if I were to win that game then I would be playing for my third IM norm. Uh, sadly I uh, I didn't win that game, I'll uh, spoil that for now. But yeah, this game was, uh, was pretty good, I was uh, really happy with this, and it was my first win against a GM in a normal game. So that's also pretty cool. I haven't played that many GMs to be honest. Um, but yeah, because I don't really play a lot of tournaments. But this was a real cool game and I hope you guys enjoyed that as well. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.